This is the Lloyd's mirror. It is an interference lithography system, which uh, we use a lot in research. And it has a couple of unique features that make it very su very well suited to a, you know, a university research uh, setting. Uh, there's a couple pictures over here that sort of illustrate the basics of interference lithography. Essentially, you take two, um, I'm sorry, some of you can't see this too well, but uh, the, the basic idea is that you take two mutually coherent uh, beams of light and allow them to cross, and where they cross, it forms a standing wave pattern, which you can record in a photosensitive media. So we use uh, photoresists and, and different sorts of things, uh, usually on, uh, on on different sorts of substrates, usually silicon, uh, to record it. And the basic setup here is on the, the back of the table is a, a helium cadmium laser, 325 nanometers. Uh, that bounces around a few times up to a spatial filter. That basically focuses the beam onto a, a pinhole uh, so that you remove any of the any sort of aberrations from the lens or from the, any of the optics in it. So what you end up having down here are very nice uh, high quality spherical waves. Um, a lot of interference lithography systems use two spatial filters and split the beam before they get to the spatial filters. Uh, in this one, the second spatial filter is basically a mirror image of the first. So, so we use this uh, mirror to form the, essentially an image of the second one. Um, samples are mounted to a vacuum chuck here. Uh, the mirror is closed and then you're ready to go. Uh, so this ends up being a very easy system to use. I can train people to use it in a couple hours. Um, so for the most part, students do their own lithography on this. Um, and there's about a dozen or so people who use it on a regular basis. And it's, uh, because we're using 325 nanometer light, the smallest pitch we can get to is half the wavelength, so we can get down in, in, to about 165 nanometers. Um, and it's very easy to adjust the system, uh, adjust the period that you write just by rotating the exposure stage. Uh, that's something that's really nice because we have so many different people who want to do so many different things. That's really the only way that you can have that sort of uh, that sort of a setup. A conventional IL system, it takes a day or so to realign the optics if you want to change the period. So this is a very nice uh, setup from that point of view. Um, and there are a few pictures over here showing uh, results from this. Um, Ratings down to 165 nanometers. Uh, if we do a double exposure, we can write grids of uh, holes or posts, depending on whether you're using a positive or a negative resist. And we can have different periods in the two directions for a grid. They don't have to be at a 90 degree angle, so we can make hexagonal patterns and other sorts of things. So, yeah. Do you glaze things? No. This is, uh, it does a lot of nice work. The throughput isn't really high, but you know, we can get what we need out of it. And I'm hesitant to, but why don't I show you this other tool that we have in here. given to MIT about 10 years ago, or parts of tools were given to MIT about 10 years ago from IBM, and it's the end result of a program that they've closed down now that was the e-beam lithography research program in terms of des designing e-beam lithography tools rather than using it to make them. So we took a lot of different parts they gave us and put together and made this one tool. And this works at 50 keV and has a lanthanum hexaboride source, so its beam diameter is more like 15 nanometers, but because the higher acceleration voltage you can get similarly sized small features. Maybe I'm going to get down to like 25 nanometers for 15, and maybe 50 or 60 nanometer pitch. Um, but this has the advantage that I like to talk about that I'm the service contract for it, so we have very low carrying costs. You know, and it's this old thing, and we've got all the software, and I've got drawers and drawers full of transistors and stuff to fix it, instead of paying tens and tens of thousands of dollars to keep that thing going all the time. But because it's this kind of a tool, only I run it, and I run it as jobs for people inside user or outside user. So we have two different tools, and we can get some more stuff. It also does much bigger fields, so it has a little bit higher throughput in some aspects, some kind of things. What kind of things can process do? Oh, a huge variety of things. Everything from people doing basic sort of physics um, research on nanowires, uh, very long coherence structures. 